Alrighty, so... I found a video on the internet, uh, and it's... It's called Magic the Gathering Why Not to Play, a Christian review. Also, destruction and burning? Ah, I, I feel as though this is going to be like when conservatives complain about Nike shoes and they just kind of burn them. Like they bought them and then they burnt them. And I've got a personal history with stuff like this because I grew up in PCA being told that like Yu-Gi-Oh and Pokemon were demonic and I shouldn't play them. So... The reason I want to look at this video is because I've already had to deal with this kind of stuff growing up for way longer than I'm comfortable with. So let's go ahead and see this particular uh, opinion on the internet and see how in line it is with the stuff that I grew up with. But first, let's get into the fan art section. This one is from... Hitterdoodle said, Behold, the most cursed thing I could fathom. Inverse Cirrus. His onesie is inside out, and he endeavors to make everyone uncomfy. I'm uncomfortable just looking at him. Like, look at that specimen. He craves making you feel like life is a little bit less worth living. That's what he's there for. As always, thank you for the fan art submission. If you want your fan art to be shown in a future video, the best way to do so is to drop it in the fan art section of the Discord. With that said, let's go ahead and take a look at today's video because this is bound to be interesting to say the least. Why is it so small? Why is it so small? Why did the video get small? Video doesn't need to be small. Let's try get making it large. There we go. Video is now large. Uh, not large enough. There we go. Now it's large enough. Now it's large enough. Jesus Christ! Why did I make that video the size that I did? I'm an awful person and an awful streamer for making you guys sit through that. Anywho. Say goodbye to Magic the Gathering. Okay. We got some, we got some pretty up, strong guys? music in the background. Okay, so I found... Okay, so I got to turn off my music because your music is a little overpowering. Not even going to lie. Some Magic the Gathering cards in the loft. Ah! Okay, so this is like the opposite of an unboxing video. This is a destruction video. Okay. So here are the Magic the Gathering cards. Just let's have a quick look through these. Okay, there's different types, uh, different abilities, different pictures on them. Man, that's some old shit too. That's, that's old. Okay, I actually couldn't wait. So I destroyed one already called Plague Witch right there. Horrible looking card. Clearly says it's a witch, spell shaper, creature. This crazy stuff, these crazy cards. Let's run through some. This okay. one's called Culling the Weak. They've got different descriptions on them. This one says, the blood of the weak shall be the ink with which we scribe great Yorgmuth's glorious name. All right, so a little bit of backstory. The reason that card has that text is these are all Phyrexianized sleepers. These are people who were part of Yawgmoth's cult during the time of Magic the Gathering that was uh, post-Brothers War. So for those who don't know, in Magic the Gathering's lore, there's a guy named Urza and a guy named Mishra. And uh, Mishra and Urza were great brothers, good friends, just best of people together, uh, that they both spent time at Decassia's dig site. And Decassia wanted them to be both great archaeologists, but Urza found out that his affinity was in artifice and Mishra was never quite able to measure up. Not really. And it caused Mishra to get jealous over time. Well, they were still brothers. They still liked each other well enough. And then they discovered what's called the Caves of Kolios. In the Caves of Kolios, they found a rock that was sitting on a pedestal in a very, very precarious way. It looked like it was you know, put there by people, and it didn't make a whole lot of sense. So they decided to remove the rock, and uh, it, it would not move. So then they pulled and pulled and pulled, and finally the rock came free. And that rock split in two. The force of them removing it split the rock in two. 
And that created uh, two separate stones, one of which could be used to empower something, and one of which could be used to weaken something, like weaken uh, a robot or uh, anything like that. Weaken a person. Like, so as a result, one rock was called the Might Stone. That was the one that Urza had in his hand when he fell on his ass. And the other was called the Weak Stone, the one that uh, was, on, was in Urza's hand when he fell on his ass. And the might, let's just say Urza was already like the golden boy of Takasia, and Mishra already had issues with like feeling inferior, not feeling too terribly great about his lot in life. He already was not super thrilled that Urza was basically better than him at everything that he did. And so uh, eventually they had a quarrel. And Takassia tried to get in the middle of their quarrel and stop them. But Takassia made the mistake of standing in the middle of uh, two people with really powerful magical artifacts, aiming them at each other like guns. And then, of course, uh, she got killed by it. As a result, Urza blamed Mishra. Mishra blamed Urza. What neither of them knew, uh, after killing their basically adopted mom, was that the Caves of Kalios was actually the home to the portal to Phyrexia. Now, in ages past, a eugenicist of the old Thran Empire discovered Phyrexia when he was exiled for his, um, let's say, spicy takes on science. That eugenicist's name was Yogmoth. Eventually, over time, when, uh, he found the plane of Phyrexia and tried to enslave everyone in the Thran Empire using what he found in Phyrexia, which was a world of machines and oil where you could basically turn people into the Borg to take them over. Yogmoth was stopped way back when, and he was stopped by sealing uh, the portal to Phyrexia that he had opened, that he had discovered in the Caves of Kolios. They sealed it behind the Might and Weak Stone so that Phyrexia could not come and basically Borgify Dominaria, the planet that everybody lives on in that particular time of Magic the Gathering. Unfortunately, uh, the portal to Phyrexia got opened again because Mishra and Urza decided to pull up a random fucking rock. After this, Mishra, who was already jaded, already getting kind of pissy with Urza, and now blames Urza for killing of their adoptive mom, He goes out in the desert and becomes a slave. During this time in the desert where he becomes a slave, he finds an old dragon engine. This is basically a giant uh, robot dragon. And he finds that his weak stone can power it. This is because the weak stone already had an affinity for artifice because it's it was used as a locking mechanism to stop an artifice planet from having any connection to theirs. So he finds that he can he can take control of these dragon engines. They're called Falaji. He takes control of this dragon engine, and he uses it to begin a campaign against a city called Krug, the city where Urza was currently employed as basically a toy repairman. He ended up hiring a guy named Thanos as a toy maker. Right? So... As he's going on what can uh, very lightly be considered a genocide of those in Krug, very, very lightly can be called a genocide, and after several attempts to uh, try to make amends between the two brothers, one person in particular starts uh, bringing Mishra under his sway, a dude called Gix. Now, Gix was originally a noble of Thran, but he was turned into an immortal Phyrexian by Yogmoth. Gix, who no longer has free will, he's been turned, like I said, he's been turned into a slave. He's been turned into a slave. But he's a slave of the highest variety. Uh, he thinks he's hot shit. He influences Mishra bit by bit to do further and further acts against humanity over time. I'm ignoring a lot of stuff that happens, by the way. Uh, but remember... Yogmoth was a eugenicist before he uh, got exiled out of Thran. When Yogmoth found the city, uh, uh, the cities 
and the landscapes of Phyrexia to be entirely uh, made of machines, and everything that lived in Phyrexia was made of machines, and he eventually took over all of Phyrexia and basically became that planet's uh, ruler of machines. Think about what happens if you get a eugenicist and you hand him uh, the keys to all of genetics and they are all basically machinized. The eugenicist is going to try to uh, perfect everybody's DNA by replacing it all with machine parts. Think transhumanism, but everybody is forced to and nobody gets an option and their free will gets stripped away when they do it. So, Yogmoth is a slaveholder and a eugenicist. Human piece of garbage. Well, not human anymore. He is... Every flavor of evil you could possibly describe. He even has the ability to infect the minds of others and slowly corrupt them to his will. He is deep shit, bad shit. And he is the original ruler, as far as the, the lore is concerned, of Phyrexia. So this card, Culling the Weak... When it has this whole, like, evil ritual uh, in favor of Yogmoth there, it's because Yogmoth is literally the personification at that time of evil in the world of Magic the Gathering. Now, eventually, uh, Urza and Mishra, their, their fight came to a head, and Urza found what was called the Silex, because a girl who used to work with and probably fucked uh, Mishra, named Ashnod, discovered a, what was called a Silex. It's a, it's a bowl that you could put tears in that would functionally be a nuclear device. She instructs Thanos, a person who she fell in love with and was the toy maker who worked under Urza, to give Urza the Silex so that Urza could use it in his fight against Mishra. Now, what nobody knew was that Urza, being redonkulously powerful and having the Might Stone, which amplified the power of anything he fucking used it with, and the specific way to activate this was using the Tears of the Land, literally emotion as fuel, and you're taking a dude who's just come to the realization he's got to kill his brother. A brother he thinks killed his adoptive mother. Because they both think the other is the one responsible for the death of Dacassia. You take an emotionally unstable old man. You fuel all of, like, five decades of regret into this machine that is fueled by emotion, and then you give him the Might Stone, which amplifies its power a billionfold. He doesn't just win the fight with Mishra, he creates a nuclear apocalypse that also has a full-on nuclear winter associated. So the Magic of the Gathering set Ice Age? Uh, th that canonically happens because Urza unleashes a nuke on Dominaria, uh, a nuke powered by him crying. L literally. The only reason that Yogmoth does not immediately invade Dominaria after this is because the place is frozen over and the Phyrexians don't do super well at this stage of the time at this stage of time uh when they are literally encased in ice. The Ice Age is like the worst and best thing to happen to Dominaria here because it prevents the Phyrexians from coming in and doing a full-on hostile takeover by reactivating the Phyrexians that were already beaten on Dominaria back in the time of Thran back when Yogmoth was originally defeated. They're basically the walking dead zombies, trapped in ice and unable to fight anything until the ice thaws. So until the ice age is done, the Phyrexians don't do a whole lot. Afterwards, Yogmoth becomes the main villain of the franchise. He, he comes out of the woodwork and goes, all right, you fucked with my Praetor. Gix is gone. All right, you fucked with my boy. Mishra's gone. Everything is wrong, and I'm going to go ahead and start killing everybody in Dominaria or enslaving them and making them, quote, perfect. And then shortly after that, uh, they they build a, a an airship or something, and it's uh, it's made of a living wood, and then the rest of the story happens. Uh, that's the Weatherlight. <laughs> and I'm not going to go into the Weatherlight saga, but that is the beginning of Yogmoth 
and and the relevant characters around him as far as I can remember in Magic's lore off of the back of my head. Off the back of my head. So when you're showing me this card, I'm doing that whole thing so that I can critique the video. So when you show me this card and you're like, ah, it says this thing about this evil person named Yogmoth. Yeah, no fucking duh. The villain's evil. That's the point. He's <laughs> he's Magic the Gathering's version of Robo Hitler. Anyway. Jesus Christ. Was that... 12 minutes of me explaining magic lore for the one card you showed? Dear God, I have a problem. Anyway. Who on earth is he? So this is some crazy creature talking about death and destruction. All right, another one here. Wait, wait. I could have waited. I haven't seen the video, so I could have waited. I could have waited until he said, who on earth is Yogmoth? so that I could properly give my explanation. It would have made way more sense if I had known he was going to say that. It would have made way more sense for me to give that whole tirade about who Yogmoth was. God, now I have to talk about the fact that Yogmoth died because he decided to take over all of Dominaria, and that's that's both times that has happened. It has failed because the Phyrexians are good at subterfuge because they can, you know, body snatch and shit because they're the Borg. They're good at subterfuge, and they always fail when they try to do an all-out invasion. Every time Phyrexia has tried an all-out invasion of anything, uh, they have failed. God, now I get to talk about slivers, because there was no way to get an entire army through the tiny portal in the caves of Kolios. So to do the ill-planned all-out uh, all invasion, Yogmoth built a planet called Wrath and collided it into Dominaria, but while he was building Wrath, he didn't realize that an entire fucking sentient species would grow on the planet because life finds a way. That's how we get slivers. Yogmoth fucked up and created a species on accident by making a fake planet. The slivers were born there, and their adaptation to being on a super hostile to life fake planet was the super hive mind shit that they're known for doing in Magic the Gathering. It all connects back to Yagma. <laughs> there you go. Magic the Gathering lore. And that's like a, a, a just a, a minute bit of the lore. <laughs> Came for the model. Stayed for the absolutely complex ass lore. So this is now chat with Sirius telling lore about every card he sees. Look, I'm sorry that I am a... So, Wizards has a word for people like me. It's called a Vorthos. I don't like the term. It feels weird. But just people who are super enthusiastic about the lore. I am super enthusiastic about Magic's lore. And Slivers came because a dude decided he wanted to become a fart. And the only way to become a fart uh, was to collide a planet into another one. I'm not kidding. Yogmoth eventually turns into a giant poisonous gas cloud. Uh, because he's unable to win any other way, and that causes him to lose. You can you can actually say the worst villain in all, like the strongest villain in Magic the Gathering's history, died by becoming a fart, and it's not an inaccurate statement. Okay, anyway, let's continue. Uh, Avon Cloud Chaser. Okay, so we have a bird soldier. Avon Cloud Chaser. Okay, this says at uh, the reappointment. Eagle begged to be human. The ancestor granted half that prayer. Okay, so ancestor worship, prayers to other gods, that kind of thing. This one's called Soul Ch oh, Is that the way that you're doing this? Like, uh, the, in, in this fictional world, they have a different god than Jesus Christ. They have a different god than Jesus Christ. How dare they? How dare they have a different god than Jesus fucking Christ? So it's evil because a, a bird worshipped a god who wasn't Jesus in a in a fictional world that doesn't exist. That's your reasoning that this one's bad, that this one's evil. That's cool. That doesn't make any sense. Let's continue. Driven by masters more terrible than the Mercadians could imagine, the dark overseers would pay any price to keep their shipwrights working. Soul Channeler. Channeler. What kind of a name for a card is that? 
So that's because during this stage of Magic the Gathering's history, black uh, was associated with evil. Black was the color of evil. All of the Phyrexians were black. Anything that dealt with necromancy was black. Uh, it, that part's still true, but any card that, like, black was the evil color of magic. So if you wanted to show anything horrible happening, if you wanted to show the wrong side of any conflict, you put, you colored those cards black. Rogues got colored black, assassins got color, uh, colored black, zombies got colored black, vampires got covered bl colored black because they were all vampires under Sengir, and Sengir was basically uh, planet cancer. I'm not even kidding. Like Sen Sengir's brood of vampires are functionally planet cancer. Correct me if I'm wrong. Other Magic the Gathering lore people, if I'm incorrect in that statement, I don't think I am. But calling Sengir's brood planet cancer feels accurate. Like, anything evil was colored uh, black at the time. So, of course, a black card would show an evil person trying to extract as much work out of a slave as possible would start siphoning their soul to make it happen. Yeah, it makes sense. Again, you're upset that the evil people in the story did evil things, and that evil is shown to people. Like, I could say that the Bible is evil because the devil is in it. Anything with, like, if I say anything with the devil in it is evil, and you agree with me, and then I start talking about the Bible and how the Bible's evil because it has the devil in it, and you start looking at me sideways, like I've said something wrong, but I haven't. I've, I've said exactly what I said the first time. I'm being consistent. You're just upset that the way to be consistent with that is inconvenient. Holy shit! Evil! It's in the story! That makes it satanic! Okay, Mind Slicer. It is the thing that goes bump in the night. <laughs> wow. What a card. Okay, this one, Thought Nibbler. This guy's got something stuck to his brain. Bog Imp. Think of it as a butcher knife with wings. Fantastic, not. Okay, Phryxian Reaper. Its desire, it desires only to help others shed the itchy, wet skin of life. Again, I, I talked about the Phyrexians. They are basically the Borg of Magic the Gathering. And the because Yogmoth was a eugenicist, he imposed what was called the, the Grand Plan for Phyrexia. The Phyrexian Grand Plan from beginning to end is basically get rid of all flesh-based life or otherwise supplement it with machine. Everything must be machine. Everything must be complete. That's Phyrexia. Things are only moral if they are complete with the power of machines. Things are only good when they are complete with the power of machines. So, of course, the flavor text on the Phyrexian talks about ripping someone's skin off because the Phyrexians don't like skin. The only Phyrexians that like having skin are the sleeper agents that use it as a mask so that they can attack loved ones of the sleeper agents when the sleeper agents don't know that that's happening. Okay, so there's a little bit of a glimpse of how dark this game is. It's an evil game. It's a little bit of, it's a glimpse of how dark the game is. Well, no, that's not a glimpse of how dark the game is. It's a, it's a story. The game has a story, an ever-evolving story, mind you, that is constantly being uh, added to and adapted to. And that story happens to have some dark moments in this. Yes, the, the story can get dark. Is it illegal or bad for stories to get dark? Like, if you're an adult, this should be fine. If you're not an adult, then I don't know. Maybe ask your parents if it's okay. Says, sir, Thunder Junction, let's go. I am not excited for Thunder Junction. The set doesn't look super great, and the everything character-wise in it is leading me into that, hey, let's have Magic the Gathering, but everybody wears funny hats meme. But, like, the meme is real. But let's continue. Magic the Gathering. This game is marketed for all ages, but kids 
play this game. I remember playing it as a kid. I, I love this as a kid. What marketed for all ages. I thought it was actually marketed for like 13 and up. Fairly certain it's marketed 13 and up. Like, magic is not marketed for children. It's marketed for teens and adults. I could be wrong here. But, like, with a lot of things, I don't think I am. Oi, oi, oi. Kids play this. Yes, kids play this. Kids kids watch R-rated movies, too. Does it mean they should? That's up to the parents. Why? It's because it's full of all these kind of creatures. I mean, look at this one, Mind Slicer. As a young kid, you like creatures. You like the idea of uh, seeing unusual things, seeing them battle, all this kind of stuff. It's so easy to also get stuck into these games. But when you get into it, this game, you're into spiritualism, you're getting into the occult, you're getting- No, you're not. This is say this is Satanic Panic, but for 2020. This is 2020 Satanic Panic, which is the most pathetic kind of Satanic Panic. You're not getting into occultism, you're playing a game with trading cards. The characters within the story of the game can do spells, but that doesn't mean that you physically think you can do spells. I don't know anybody who plays magic that is like, ah, yes, the cards told me that I can do fireballs. Which means I can do fireballs. Yeah, that's not really a... It's not really a thing. Not really. But... Weird people are gonna weird people. And they're going to freak out about anything they can. At all. <laughs> I cast magic missile at the darkness. Jesus. Okay, let's... Let's continue. ...into everything that's not gone. Okay, a lot of the cards say things like... Zombie, horror, imp... Sorcery. And if we have a look here at the uh, back of the card... The description, magic, the gathering... And then we have the, the five-point symbol, like an occultic symbol there. So what I want to do is I want it's to shed some like light on this, really. Symbol? It's not just a game. This is entry into spiritual things. No, it's not. You've said it twice, and you haven't actually, like, substantiated that. You've literally just said, uh, the things are spooky. They are creatures. That makes it not a game. That makes it creepy. That makes it scary. But no, that's not what that means. That's not what that means at all. It means you don't like it. It means you think it has something to do with the occult and evil and all of that stuff. But it doesn't necessarily have to. It's a card game. And it just has to be a card game. It doesn't need to be more than that. The artwork and the story is about that, but again, your inability to separate fiction from reality is not the barometer for whether something's evil. And it never has been. But these people who like to panic... Also, by the way, just so you know, uh, not that one, that's the wrong one. Where's my response button? While I've been doing this, the reason it's taken a little bit to get to it is we actually got this. While that was happening. <laughs> so, but, anywho. Anywho. That's not important. This is important. I didn't have the right button to switch over. You're basically delving into the occult. It's, uh, yeah, obviously you're not actually physically doing the things yourself, like casting spells, but you are doing it through these cards. No, you're playing a card game. Like, this is like saying when you play chess, you're killing your opponent's pawns through the game. Like, no, you're just playing a game. You're overblowing what's happening in here. If I play Risk with people, it doesn't mean I'm actually uh, equipping all of my armies with guns and murdering everything that they hold dear. I just want them to think that I am. 
So these need to be destroyed. They all will be destroyed. And if you're playing them, I recommend you to do the same. Yeah, people can spend a lot of money on these things and have a collection that costs a lot of money, but actually, it's not worth hanging on to it. I mean, I spend money on these things, but they've just got to go. There's no telling what it will do to you if you continue to play with these things, to mess around with them, to open your mind to the concepts that are in these cards. How does that make any sense? How does that make even a little bit of sense? It doesn't make any sense at all. The card game is going to infect your brain. How? Please tell me by what mechanism. Please tell me the studies that have been done that prove this particular thesis. Please show me on the doll where magic did the gathering. Anything to do with sorcery. Magic. And all of this kind of thing that is outside of God and that God doesn't like needs to be removed. How do you know God doesn't like the collectible card game Magic the Gathering pro uh, produced by Wizards of the Coast and Richard Garfield? Is there is there a, a passage in the Bible that says that God does not like the collectible card game Magic the Gathering produced by Wizards of the Coast and Richard Garfield? I don't think that is actually in the Bible. Also, Tipster, thank you so much for the raid. We're making fun of fundamentalism. Said Hasbro is of hell. Yeah, Hasbro's evil. I'll agree with that. Easy. So this is so LARPy. Yeah, like dude literally is pretending he is a paladin right now. And he is uh he is absolving the world of sin. So let's burn some of these. Alright, so we destroyed the one called Plague Witch. Now let's destroy Mind Slicer. So we're burning these right now. <laughs> to be right with God. <laughs> I'm Goodbye, burning these buggy. to be I'm burning these to be right with God. No, dude, you're going from benign normal Christian to potential psychopath. You are going from one to the other. You can be Christian and be normal. You can be Christian and be a relatively okay person. Like anybody else can. Anybody of any religious variety or even non-religious can be a relatively okay person. In you know, as much as human beings can be. I don't want to hear anything from the antinatalists, but it's very, very easy to be a normal fucking person. But when you start going around and going, burn your magic gathering cards to be right with God. No, you're not being a normal person now. Now you're being a person who I want to stay very far away from me. Not just because I have magic cards I don't want you to destroy, but also because I'm a little worried about how mentally stable you are. Like, there's a line, right? There's a line. If anybody tells me that a deity is talking to them directly and they can, like, megaphone to me what it is saying, I start to get kind of concerned. So when you do this whole, I'm doing what God wants, I'm doing what he needs, I, I would like a little bit of evidence for where that's coming from, just a smidge. And because I know I'm not going to get that evidence, ever... Because what is revelation to the first person is hearsay to the next. Always is. Since I know I'm not going to get what I need out of this transaction, I'm just going to assume that you don't know what you're talking about, and you're just LARPing. You're doing this because it makes you feel good. Not because you're trying to get right with God. You don't even know what that looks like. You are doing something because it makes you feel good. It makes you feel good to destroy these things instead of actually doing anything worthwhile for yourself or the Christian faith. It feels good to LARP that what you are doing has some kind of consequence. And I'm sorry to tell you, but burning these magic cards doesn't have any kind of consequence other than making you look kind of like a fool on the internet wasn't good to know you good riddance and go to where you belong it's gonna right, be let's funny. destroy culling the weak let's burn this thing up gruesome this is what happens when somebody goes through my childhood and does not improve as a person because of it instead they just allow it to control them
This is what happens. When you go through the Christian fundamentalist childhood, and instead of recognizing that, okay, I've learned some lessons from this, and uh, this is not the way I want to be because these people are assholes, uh, you instead embrace it whole hog and go, no, I want to be an asshole. It's my goal in life to be an asshole. It's my goal in life to be a human piece of shit. It's my goal in life to tell people that it's not okay to enjoy playing card games or being gay or any of that. And yeah, I said enjoy being gay, because there are some people who do enjoy it, to at least a degree. Ah. Why are these people? Why are they? Did I drive really slow in the ultra-fast lane? Things. Not even showing you the worst of it. So dark. So evil. So evil. These creators, game creators, know it what gets, they're doing. It gets my crystal. This guy is so channeling. And that is the last thing we want to be looking at doing. Channeling souls. Come on. Cards of sorcery. And all your influence. Be gone in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh my god, it's so, so cringy. seriously, guys. These cards create influence in your mind, in your heart. How You're though? connected to them through. Desire, How do they do that? To engage with these things, these creatures, these ideas, these concepts, these battles. And the devil is real and he will work with all of those things do you, and develop them. Do you have, I don't know, a smidge of evidence for that? Like even a little bit. I'm just I'm just asking for a crumb of evidence. Just a tiny bit. So they do know. What they're doing, but it's not what you think they're doing. Yeah, they're they're selling you cardboard. Like their goal is to sell you cardboard, and they are in fact selling you cardboard. Like I'm on board if you want to do the whole Magic the Gathering's evil thing. If we want to talk about, yeah, I don't know, addictive nature of of human beings and how easy it is to like lose money gambling on gotcha systems. Like, it, sure, we can go that route. I'm okay with that. I love magic, and I can still engage in that particular conversation. Predatory marketing and all that? Yeah, that's fine. Because that's well within the realm of reality. This is not the realm of reality. This is somebody just engaging with delusion. And please, do not get it twisted. That's not me saying that the Christian is delusional for being a Christian. Because you can be a Christian without doing this. You can be a Christian without acting like this. Acting like a bell end this way is not a prerequisite to Christianity. Never has been, never will be. And if anybody tells you that you're not a proper Christian unless you do this stuff, engage with things this way, then they are lying to you. They've got something to sell you and they want you to be part of a cult instead of actually being part of what's supposed to be a, a loving religion that teaches that everybody are equal. Penza says, I mean, he could be doing this privately. He could be, but instead he's choosing to record a video about this and wax lyrical about how godly he is by doing so. This is the type of Christo pornography that fundamentalists will engage in because it gets them happy. It gets them thrilled. They get their rocks off from other Christians telling them how righteous they are, reaffirming how righteous they are. It's narcissism masquerading as selflessness for a god. Them in you and lead you down the wrong path. So all these cards here you see are going to be burned. They're going to be cut. They're going to be ripped. They're going to be destroyed. And there will be nothing left. And I hope that's going to be the same for any of you who have any of these cards or anything that is a cult, that is evil, that is satanic. Let it be removed, and I pray in the name of Jesus that you will see the light concerning these things, concerning these cards. I mean, look at this guy, the creature zombie. Oh. It looks so evil. I'm so threatened by the cardboard. My God, who I swear to you is infinite and all-powerful and all-knowing, is terrified of these little bits of cardboard. They are awful and evil, and he can't stand them. Because despite being the creator of the universe, he forgot to give himself thick skin. 
all these different crazy cards. Let the light come on you and anyone you know who's involved in these things, Magic the Gathering, or any other occult cards or occult games or occult things. May you be separated from them, saved from them, and may you come to the light uh, and follow God. All right, so I'm just going to say it right now. We're, we're basically done with any of the substance of the video. There's 40 seconds left, but it's just going to be more waxing lyrical about how he's super righteous. I'm just going to go ahead and leave with a observation. Had Christianity not become the dominant religion of the world, it would be seen as occultism by another religion that were equally fundamentalist or equally proselytizing. If it had not become the dominant religion, it is very, very likely that just something else would see it as evil instead. I don't know if I'm off base in that observation, but I feel as though I'm not. If somebody's uh, more of a scholar of Christianity than I ever hoped to be, then maybe you can correct me in the comment section below. Uh, if anything, you can do it for the engagement of the video, especially if you think I'm hella wrong. Because then we get to fight in the comments, and by fight I mean I can ignore basically everything that you write. So the Bible has zombies? It does, in Matthew. It does have zombies, in Matthew. Get off the cross, we need the wood! <laughs> anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I, I feel like this is maybe a little too cringy. Just a smidge. I debated on, on talking about this, like, on my Magic the Gathering channel, and I ended up not doing it. Because it... I really don't want my, my Magic the Gathering audience to have a super cross-pollination with that. But, like... God, it would've been funny. Said so we needed the cringe tonight. This was a good pick-me-up. After some of the other stuff. It, it's needed. It's needed. Said it's more speculation than observation, but I think it's accurate. It's it's speculation, but it's also observation based on how Christians treat Islam. Christians treat Islam like it's the weird occultist thing that is so fundamentally different than their own belief. Christians persecuted Mormons for being a different flavor of Christian, albeit based off of a different flavor of liar. But still... Hear me out, biblically accurate zombie game. Okay, so the, the Jesus has his thing happen, and then the zombies come, and then they're gone. Cool. That the zombie game is complete. But that's it for that one. I have I have nothing else to say where that's concerned. Satanic Panic 2.0, everybody. Let let's begin it. It'll be a rocking good time. It'll be an amazing time for everybody. Insert end the video tagline here. Hey, I just quickly want to give a thank you to all of my wonderful patrons who keep this show running. YouTube and Twitch are a pretty bumpy ride at the best of times, and the stability a Patreon provides me is worth more than I can say here. I'd also like to thank each and every one of my $20 and up patrons here, and they would be Red Joker, Britzkrieg, Cameron, Dren, Gemshin, Smiling DM, Poundini, Mabity Babity, Naomi, Isaac, Nixie Chan, The Oberon Team, Agamotto, Jordan, Ravi, Juni, Curatorian, Prisma, all of you, Sagittarius, I'm not saying that part, and Starlight. And finally, thank you to everyone else that helps keep this channel alive. While you're here, why not check out another video? And thank you for watching.